Hello and thanks for watching. This is the Crash Course in Maya Hair series, um, video number three, Maya Hair Menu. My name is John and I'll be talking to you about the Maya Hair Menu. In this video I'll be talking about the hair menu, the location, the uh, create hair window, the options inside that window, a couple of tools to manipulate the general look in terms of scale and uh, how to use R as a paint tool the nose created when you actually do create the hair and the main shape node I'll be working with. Now let's talk about the Maya hair for a moment. Maya hair is dynamic because it works with gravity, it works with drag, it works with air effects. That means it's going to be in the dynamics tab. So if you go to this drop down, drop down menu, go to dynamics, right there, or you can push F5 for default hotkey. And the menu is going to be on the right hand side, right here. I want to pop this menu out so it doesn't close on you. Uh, the uh, uh, menu items I'll be talking about is the create hair options, scale hair tool, paint hair follicle options, and that's basically it for now. I'll be talking more about some of this stuff a little bit later on. So let's pop open the create hair uh, menu. As this window opens up, you'll see that uh, there's a number of options. The output type, this is going to be uh, what, when you push create hairs or apply, this is what's going to be outputted. Paint effects, which is what will be rendered out. Nerves curves, so you don't actually have anything rendered, but you can actually have control over things, which I'll explain shortly. And you can have paint effects and nerves curves. I honestly don't know very many circumstances that'll actually have both these happening, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that hopefully one day your production may have this. Uh, nerves curves allows you to have a lot of control, it allows you to uh, actually physically control the curves and attach controls to the curves. This is very nice and helpful if you want to uh, have the, ner uh, the Maya hair control Maya fur, if you want to create an eye case blind chain on it for control there, or if you want to create a wire deformer or anything, that's what, just all sorts of things for the nerves curves. But for uh, this, I'm just going to pad the paint effects. Uh, this checkbox is create rest curves as well. Um, I'll explain what rest curves are later, but just know that the checkbox is right here. You have these two radio buttons. You got grid and at selected points. Grid is going to create everything. Open up the text editor and the zero one space. At selected points is it if you have uh, like a couple of faces selected, it's only going to draw on uh, the that points itself. In this case, I want to have it draw over the entire grid. Now, because this is a uh, paint effect, thus uses the text editor. It uses U's and V's instead of X's and Y's. So, how many follicles? I'll explain later you want on the uh, UV count. So in this case I'll just have 8 and 8. Passive fill, uh, this is a type of follicle I'll explain later as well, but this is how many uh, passive follicles you want. Randomization, at this current point it's set to zero so there's no randomization, therefore all the follicles created will be lined up to this grid. It's always nice to have a little bit of chaos and havoc to something like hair, so you usually want to pump that up to like 0.5 or something like that. Edged bound means that the follicles be created on the edges instead of in the middle. Equalize means that uh, it'll try to make everything as even as possible instead of it being uh, completely on one side, all the follicles be created on one side. These two radio buttons talk about the uh, types of follicles to be created, dynamic and static. A dynamic follicle will actually work with the gravity, work with the air, work with the drag when you use a time, uh, timeline. Static means it just won't work with anything, it'll just be kind of stationary. You have to manually do everything yourself. In this case, I'm just going to have it on dynamic. Uh, points per hair. Since uh, it's going to create CV curves, is, uh, this is going to have how many, th this is going to tell Maya how many CVs you want on those curves 10, 20, 100,000, stuff like that. But the more points you have, the slower it's going to be. And the slower simulation, the more, the more RAM's going to eat, etc., etc. In this case, I'm just going to have it at 10. But just know that if you want longer, uh, long flowing hair, you might want to put this up to 15 or 20. Now that uh, length is how long you want the hair to be, you can always adjust this later, so I'll keep it at 5 for now. Place hairs into. Um, this drop down menu tells Maya what you want the hairs created into. Uh, if you have a pre existing hair system, you can actually apply these to a pre existing hair system. So let me just create a plane. As you can see, it's in zero one space. I'll minimize that. I'll create the hairs, and let's just see what we get. 
as you can see that uh, because the plant's so small, it kind of cluttered everything all together. And I'm actually going to redo this. So let me undo a couple times, scale it up so it's not so cluttered, hit apply again, and there we go. You can see it is aligned to the grid according to zero one space. You can see right there. Now we're going to go to the uh, scale hair scale hair tool. Select this if you want to make the hair longer or uh, shorter. So as you can see, I'm making it longer, making it shorter. You can also do this uh, follicle by follicle, which I'll explain later. But one of the main tools <coughs> I want to talk about is the paint hair follicle tool. I want to go to the option menu, and it'll load up the artisan paint tool. Now this is going to be your primary tool for general uh, editing in terms of uh, follicles and stuff like that. I want just going to reset the options. You can see it's going to create. Uh, there's options to create follicles, create passive follicles, delete follicles, edit attributes, trim hairs, and extend hairs. If you want to create the follicles, like uh, the previous menu, if you wanted to create a new one or go to a new hair, uh, the same hair shape. I'm going to just increase the brush size so you can see the outcome a little bit easier. So you can see that uh, the follicles with the hair length of 6 versus 10 is created with 20 by 20 UV. Now if I want to delete the follicles, click delete, and I just start deleting the follicles off that object. I'll talk about the edit follicle attribute later, but trim hairs will actually make the follicle shorter. As you can see, as I start painting, the follicles are getting shorter. Or if I want to make the follicles longer, start painting and the follicles will get longer. Theoretically. <laughs> Oops, was that out of accident? Now when you actually uh, look at this, you'll notice that a lot of the menu items from one to the other are the same. UV count, points per hair, hair length, hair system, same thing. Now let's uh, open up the outliner. You'll actually see that, I'll close out shapes real quick. Once, uh, create, once you create the hair, you'll notice that a few things, actually things are created. You'll have a hair system, the PFX uh, hair one, hair system follicle one group. Now the uh, hair system node, this is going to be the primary node I'll be working with. Uh, this actually is a kind of like a global control for everything. It uh, contains the dynamics, it contains the render options, it, can, it creates how it looks. So this is going to be your main, main control. With that uh, there's also a follicle group node and uh, within that group is going to be all the follicles. And you can see there's a lot of follicles here. These follicles, in turn, have curves that you can uh, command and manipulate later. As you can see, these red dots, I don't know if you can see it because of the uh, frass, but you can see these red dots, those are the follicles themselves. There are three types of follicles, so I, I stated previously. There's going to be a dynamic one, which actually works with gravity, static, which doesn't work with anything at all, and passive, which tries to uh, get the attributes around the follicles and try to predict what you want to happen. Um, there's also the uh, PFX hair one uh, node that is created. This is going to be your key to rendering. If you don't have this, visible even, it won't render. So uh, that is a basic rundown of the Maya hair menu. In the next video I'm going to talk about the, uh, the general tools I use and how to manipulate Maya hair. Thanks for tuning in and have fun.